And good evening, everyone. ESS Empire State Sports proudly presents the Wise Guys Sports Talk Show. Your host tonight, Joy Liam, Dave Barlett, myself, Pete Ghost, and our very special guest, Messina Athletic Director, Gavin Regan. Gavin, welcome to the program. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, guys, for having me. You know, it's I've heard a lot about your a lot of good things about your show, and uh, obviously, I have a relationship with Joy, and I'm just happy to be on. So, thanks for inviting me. Well, you should be happy to be on. I'm running low on people. <laughs> so, so I hope I'm not the last. You know? <laughs> we need to have musicians on for last night for crying out loud. <laughs> hey, no, Gavin. Now, Gavin, you are you are of our age, so uh, I think you would appreciate this. Yours, you are coming at. Last night we taped a show with Double Axel. Oh, and, nice. Uh, it, it was it was pretty cool. We had a pretty good time doing that, and. Uh, a lot of memories, a lot of, a lot of great memories. Uh, the old bars and things that they talked about was it was really good. So and they played at a lot of bars and a lot of proms in my era. That's for darn sure. We heard them a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we all have. So yeah, well, and another uh, another thing they brought they they seem to bring up didn't they guys they brought up Lake Placid a few times last night. Uh, yeah. they pl they played a gig uh, at the. Well, and, and Gavin, this is one of the things I wanted to talk to you about when we go through things. But they they played during the uh, 80 Olympics uh, up at uh, in the 32 rank um, yeah. for like the kickoff or something like that. So, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that uh, with you um, a little bit later. But right now, um, we want to give you a chance to to introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about your pathway, some of the things that you've accomplished, done, uh, what you're doing now. You're not okay. only the athletic director uh, for Messina Central. You're doing a lot more than that. And and I will tell uh, Pete and Dave, I got to spend some time with Gavin uh, in Lake Placid uh, about a month and a half ago for uh, Central Committee meetings with uh, NISPA. And uh, the one thing I learned about Gavin is first time I've really had a, a chance to hang out with him is he's quite the name dropper you're gonna hear some you're gonna hear some names in the world of hockey and dave is a dave's a big hockey fan um you're gonna yeah. hear some names in, from the world of hockey uh i think you're gonna find this pretty cool so and gavin feel free to drop all the names that you want but go ahead and uh and lead off talking a little bit about yourself well well um just like you guys, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a local guy. Um, you know, grew up in Potsdam, went to Potsdam high school, and then uh, was one of those guys that was an okay hockey player and from the North country graduated in 1980. And I had a couple offers of maybe playing some lower level division one hockey, uh, or I could try to play D three hockey. Back when I played, there was D1, D2, and D3, and Norwich University is where I ended up going to school, and they were D2 at the time. So played a little bit of hockey there, and then unfortunately my sophomore year, I severed my Achilles um, playing, and uh, my hockey career was over. I actually, um, my freshman and sophomore year, played soccer and hockey there. But, um, you know, was uh, played every sport known to man in high school, Played varsity sports in four different four different uh, teams, um, but that was a lot of fun. And uh, but then after that, like I said, I transitioned, played a little bit of uh, college soccer and college hockey, but always had a passion for hockey. And basically, I, I you know a lot of things like most people, a lot of things happen by accident, and. Uh, uh, that's kind of how my hockey career kind of started from, from basically from a local guy. Um, I was my first job out of college. I worked for EF Hutton and oh, that's an old name for you guys, uh, a brokerage a firm out of Albany lived in Saratoga. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Lived in Saratoga. And just by circumstance, uh, first country savings banks was looking for somebody to do all the investing for the bank. And I didn't know about it. And the senior vice president called my dad and got a hold of me in Saratoga. And you know how you know I had no desire to move back to Potsdam. I was having fun living in Saratoga and working in Albany, and had some success. Um, but you know how your everybody's mom and dad said, you know, in those days, oh, what's going to hurt going to the interview, right? Just come for the interview. 
and I had no desire to come back. So I ended up going, coming to the interview. They get down to, you know, the short strokes and they said, hey, we'd like to have you come and uh, be vice president of the bank and do investing for the bank. And, you know, what's going to take, what's it going to take for you to come here? And I gave them a number that I thought they would say, okay, see you later, son. And, and so then they said, sure, that's fine. <laughs> next, <laughs> no, thing I know, <laughs> next thing I know, I'm back in the North country, which was worst places in the world to be, right? So end up after, after living in Saratoga and working in Albany for five years, came back to the North country and basically have just stayed since. But how I got involved in hockey, you know, it's a typical, you know, my, my peewee hockey coach and my midget hockey coach was a friend of my dad's and guy named Bud Sherburn. And Bud found out from my dad, I was back in town and he calls me up and he says, um, Hey, Gavin, I'm looking for a, a hockey coach to help me out with the peewee team. And I'm going, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of every reason why to say no, but this guy was a close friend of my father. Did one of those, we all know those guys that, that they did everything for their local organizations, you know, from, you know, working the concession stand to, you know, doing tag days when we were kids, you know, and all those things that when he asked me, there was no way I was going to be able to say no to him. So I said, Mr. Sherburn, I don't, you know, I can't even, I don't even know where my skates are. And he goes, well, you better get a pair. And he hung the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of, that's kind of how it started. But I've done everything in hockey. So I, my, you know, I coach hockey locally here in Potsdam for about 15 to 20 years. Um, coached some national. So then I got to doing some coaching on the national level for our development teams from New York State and did, you know, some stuff nationally too. But um, just had the opportunity from early on of coaching some great players. I mean, even from, from this area that when they were going through youth programs, I coached them and I coached some summer teams like, like Eric Cole before he went to Clarkson, I coached them. Just, just some names that, that, that we know of. And I'm obviously. It's not us, right? Nope. No. Okay. Um, you know, just got to, you know, just got to know over the years. So um, uh, just a bunch of good guys. But then, like I said, I, it's just like been one kind of thing after the other. And I was asked to uh, help out in 1999, right after the first Olympic Games for our women's team to help out with the women's national team. So that's kind of how my, my start in, in our national teams uh, started. Um, did because they were training in Lake Placid and did a lot of stuff with them in Lake Placid, both on a coaching end and, and an administrative end. So, um, but yeah, it's it's been as Joey knows. I mean, I could go on and tell you forever how how things went. But I mean, there's just tons of uh, great people. Things. 2006, I was the general manager of the the 2006 women's Olympic team. Um, in 2018. I was general manager of the men's Olympic team at Pyeongchang. Um, so there's just been, you know, and you, you, you get to know a, a lot of players um, through in 2017 um, through being head of international hockey. Um, you know, Jordan Greenway played on our, our New York team, on, on our world junior team when we beat Canada in a shootout in Montreal. Um, you know, there are 23,000 people in Montreal at the, the Bell Center, and I'm down in right next to the Montreal Canadiens locker room. Um, there was a there was a TV kind of like a TV crew there. That was the only place in the building that they had things going live because it was on a four second delay in the building and in, you know, on, on the, the Jumbotron or whatever. So I was watching it live because they had me and the head of Hockey Canada go down to the locker room because as soon as the, uh, you know, the winners were happening, now the award ceremonies were going were gonna to go on. So I was either handing out gold medals to our team or silver medals to our team. So luckily, we all know how that happened. We, we won the gold medal and, you know, there's... Uh, 
It was people sending me text messages and pictures that, you know, when I was given Jordan Greenway his gold medal on, you know, it was on the NHL network and people were taking photos of me giving Jordan and I, I have that. So people always ask me and you guys will be the first. See, there's only one person that knows this. And I told one of these days, I'll tell the story. So I put in uh, the gold medal on Jordan Greenway and I and and everybody say, well, what were you saying to him? Because you took longer with him than anybody else. I said, I said, you've come a long way from playing in Canton and Potsdam. Pretty good for a North Country guy to win a world championship. And we all know. So, and it was kind of a unique time period then because because of the collective bargaining agreement, we were hoping the NHL was going to go to the Olympics in 2018. So we won the World Juniors. It's it. The tournament starts in 2017, but it ends in January of 18, and the actual the Olympics were in February. So I talked to Jordan um, and a couple other players, uh, Troy Terry, the Donato boy that played on our World Junior team, because we just found out that the NHL said they will not would not go to the Olympics in Pyeongchang, and within a month we had to put together a team to play in the Olympics. And we didn't, you know, we had guys in Europe, but we didn't know, you know, how good the European pros were composed opposed to these younger guys like Jordan Greenway. So we said, hey, we'll take a bunch of physically strong men that were good players, even though they were young, and we took them to the Olympics. So he actually was going to turn pro after the, um, uh, the uh, World Junior Tournament. He was at BU at the time. He was going to turn pro right after the tournament, but we talked to his agent, who was Steve Bartlett, another New York guy he's from Rochester, and basically told Jordan, hey, we'll talk to your team, and if you want to, we'd love to have you go to the Olympics, and then you can turn pro after the Olympics, So, and that's what he ended up doing, So, and it's kind of funny because at that time, uh, you know, another local guy, um, Derek Lalone, was coaching Iowa, and that's where Jordan went. So it's just kind of how, you know, how things, so that was kind of, and it was a great experience for him. We all know how, how well he's doing in the NHL and he's a great kid. And so those are, but those are, but Joey talking about, you know, name dropping. I mean, I just, as, as from being head of international hockey, I have a number of uh, NHL GMs that are on committees for me. And obviously all these, you know, NHL coaches, because when we go to a men's world championship, I mean, you've got to be an American citizen. So, you know, we, we take NHL GMs and Americans and we take American coaches. So you can't be, we can't take a Canadian. So, so those are, those are the guys that we interact with to get their feedback on players and stuff like that. But um, I was telling Joey when, when Derek was with Tampa and I told him the, uh, again, I said, Hey, I hope I never have to call you up and say, Hey, I want you to help coach our team at the men's world championship because that goes on the same time as the Stanley cup playoffs. So the players and the coaches that go to the world championships are those players and coaches that aren't involved in the Stanley cup or go or, or, or get bounced out for lack of a better word in the first round. So I said, kisser, I hope you never, I hope I never get to, <laughs> I want you always to be in the Stanley cup playoffs. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good hockey people in the North country. Um, I would have to say it's because um, the communities, you know, they really get around. It doesn't matter what the sports is. Sports are, Joey can attest to that. You guys can all attest to that. Hey, the communities are small, but it, the sports are a focal part of the community. So, um, and I think, uh, you know, we kind of bend a little bit towards maybe hockey because, you know, Clarkson and St. Lawrence, people watch that. And, hey, we've had great kids come from, you know, Brazier, um, Stevie Williams, and we can go on, Andre Dalbach, we can go on and on with the great players that, that your area has had. And I think people will, will uh, you know, kind of gravitate to those things. So, but um, anything you want to ask me, I can tell you, I can talk forever, but I want, you know, you guys to get what you want too. So um, I, I got some uh, unbelievable stories. Um, I mean, crazy stories that have happened to us. Uh, um, and some, you know, some ones that were, you know, I mean, what, what we've tried to do when being on the road is, 
you know, well, if, if there's if there's military or things like that, we try to engage those men and those women too. So we've been in some obscure places for world championships uh, like Latvia, and there might be an American base and we'll get, you know, start talk to our state department and get all those, as many of those uh, military people to come, you know, and, and watch the games and be guests of us and stuff like that. So we try to do those things because I mean, obviously, preaching to the choir. I mean, those are the best of the best. So people, so we try to, we try to get those people involved. Uh, I've been in, I've been in Italy and the bus driver is supposed to drive us for six hours and just decide I quit. <laughs> Literally leaves the bus. We got players and everybody on the bus and we've got no bus driver. And, you know, so it's just, but we've had some, we've had some crazy things with some uh, unbelievable some unbelievable experiences too. So it's been a lot of fun, but what do you, what do you, what questions do you have for me guys? Well, I got, I got one out the bat. Um, so let's go back a little bit when you were with the junior teams yep. and then you're waiting to see if the NHL is going to go. Yeah. They don't. Do you take mm -hmm. the whole junior team or you still have open tryouts Gavin for? No. So, so Pete, because it was such a short window, um, the one thing that USA Hockey has done a per, pretty good job. So I'll kind of rewind it. Um, assistants that I have had are Jimmy Johansson. And Jimmy Johansson uh, was a 1990 Olympic uh, hockey player and a 94 hockey player. If you remember that transition where they went two years because they wanted to stagger now the summer and the winter Olympics before we used to go every four years, but it was 92 and 94. Um, like Todd Marchant played on that on one of those teams, so you know from Clarkson. So mm -hmm. he was an, a great player. Um, he was my assistant for a number of years. Um, tragically, after the World Juniors in 2018, at 52 years old, had a massive heart attack and died. So, but Jimmy Johansson has been ran the the program, the international program, with me. And now John Van Beesbrook does. And John Van Beesbrook, you know that name, former NHL goalie, yep. uh, assistant executive director, and he's with uh, International Hockey. And those guys have been the reason why we've had such great success. They're great people. But back to your question, Pete. Um, in 2017-18, in, in January of 18, when the NHL didn't go, we had such a short window that we basically just had to put a team together. So we'd he heard rumblings of this for three or four months. So we basically, with a number of people, some GMs, some people in, in, in Europe, kind of put a depth chart together who we thought our best athletes were that weren't NHL pros. Because the NHL wouldn't let anybody that was on contract in the NHL or the AHL go. Mm -hmm. So if you were on a, you were on a two way contract, I mean, it didn't matter if you were playing in, you know, uh, Rochester or Buffalo, neither one of them could go. So we were looking at basically European pros and the European pros. And we felt the college player were better in like the East Coast League guys. And they definitely were. So that was the big reason why we took our high end players at the time that were on our world junior team. We said, hey, we're going to try to get as many of those guys to stay. And we got some high-end guys. Probably should have got more of them in hindsight. Um, but then we actually, too, is clawed back. So Brian Gianta had just retired. So Brian wasn't on contract with anybody. He was our captain, and he played, you know, played in the Olympic team. So he had been retired, wasn't on contract. We had college guys that were on the world junior team. And we had European pros play on the team because they were available. So that's, but it was just a handpicked type of thing. It wasn't perfect, but everybody was in the same situation. Canada had to do the same thing because there was such a short window. I mean, and, and there's some constraints that the countries have based on their Olympic committees and the international Olympic committee. I mean, you've got to screen these guys, you've got to get health stuff. So there's a lot of moving parts just to actually get there. So we, we couldn't say, hey, we're going to take two weeks to, to have a tryout and those types right, of things. Right, yeah. That was my next question is, I'm sure you guys were already putting a, a list together 
just in case. Yeah. And then, and then in the short, on the short term, how do you get all the paperwork together for these guys and make sure it gets in there in time? There must be people scrambling. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of work. I mean, and um, you know, just like anything else, we know people that are great getting stuff done for you, and people will drag and procrastinate and won't get stuff done. I mean, there was some players that we had to get a hold of, you know, agents, moms, dads, girlfriends. Or other guys, anything you wanted, they'd have it done for you. So yeah, I mean, it was there was a lot of you know there was a lot of things that we had a lot of moving parts. Hey, just as simple guys of, hey, getting them there. So we go to Payong Chang, and we got guys that are in Russia. We've got guys that are in Sweden. We got a kids in Minnesota. One might be New York, just to get them. Literally, literally those guys introduced themselves at the rink for the very, for, they never, you know, never been together as a team. So Tony Granato was the coach of that team. And so we're all in the locker room, you know, everybody finally gets there and it's always, you know, just like anything else. Hey, Joe didn't get his bag. We lost his bag. You know, David's, you know, his flight got delayed, just things that happen, but we all get there and, and, you know, you got to do the, the best you can. So it was, not the easiest situations, but it's, uh, you know, it, it was a great experience for everybody. I mean, not too many people can say, hey, I played in the Olympic Games. So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty great experience. And, you know, hey, uh, my name is will always be in there as, as GM of the Olympic team. So when when I got when I got great grandchildren or whatever, they'll be say, oh, man, yeah, we saw that. But yeah, it's it's it, it's there's a lot of moving parts to it, you know, just to be able to get teams together. So whether it's a world championship or the Olympics. Okay. So my question then is, so you're talking about the Olympics and you're, you've got a team and players are meeting them, meeting each other for the first time in the country where the Olympics are being held. You're, I mean, you're there for the event and they're just meeting each other. Yeah. Whereas opposed to that. Um, and I know it's, I know it's a movie, but when you when you watch uh, uh, Miracle, yep, and you and Herb Brooks took his team in the movie, and I don't know how accurate again, and taught them a whole new system of how to play hockey. That you know, he taught them the inter international uh, scheme of things as opposed to what they were used to. How how accurate was that? And then I guess it's just it's year to year and team to team as to, as to how much time you have to prepare. Yeah. So, so um, the one thing about Herb's team, which was, which is funny is in, and Dave, you're at that age too. So I actually went to the games in Lake Placid in 1980. I mean, yeah. um, <laughs> when the, when the miracle movie came out, they had a premiere in Lake Placid and I got invited um, Jim Craig and I went, um, uh, who, who else, oh, who else went? Oh, Buzz Snyder went with the, and that group and, um, Jack O'Callaghan were the three of them. And I went and we went to the premiere. They, they had a little, we're downstairs and it's been, it's being moved now, but downstairs where they used to have the hall of fame room in Lake Placid, they had an event in there. Then they bust us to the, um, uh, movie theater in Lake Placid and Bob was a wonderful, wonderful guy. He was the president of New York State Hockey for probably 30 years. I took him to New York City when he was probably in his 80s. And my son, Carson, who's 22, was probably about five. And I, um, I remember it like it was yesterday. I'm driving a big Tahoe, and I have one of those DVD players in it. And I just got in the movie, and I said to Bob, get in the back. So here's a, an 80 year old in one seat, my five year old in a car seat and the other seat. And I put the miracle movie in and Bob was proceeding to tell Carson everything that was true and wasn't true in the movie. 
So I found out, like, you know, I knew the people in the movie from the players to Walter Bush. I mean, I personally know these guys. A number of them have passed away now. But when I started 31 years ago, I knew these guys personally. But to back to what you're saying, David, like um, Bob used to say to me, you know, part of the movie where Herb basically kicks the committee out and says, hey, here's my team. And Walter says, hey, Herb, you know, we got a committee here to pick that team. That's not true. Herb Brooks. BGM, Minnesota North Stars, and lose a wonderful guy. So, um, but there was a lot of things that were true and a lot of things that weren't, I mean, there were some things that weren't true, but most of the stuff of the interaction between the Minnesota guys and the New England Boston guys, oh, that was true. They hated each other. Well, I can imagine. Because of the rivalry and playing at BU and playing at uh, Minnesota, Minnesota. Yeah. At, in that tournament, in the end, they hated each other. So, so a little known fact that most people don't know. So Herb Brooks, so, um, oh God, uh, he coached, for, he was with the Penguins forever. Who is Herb's assistant? Oh, Patrick. Um, Patrick guy was, uh, was Herb's assistant. Craig Patrick was not Herb's first choice to be his assistant. Tim Taylor, who is the head coach at Yale, was Herb Brooks' choice to be the assistant. Ben Smith, who's one of my closest friends, Ben was Timmy's assistant. Ben was our women's, the first, he coached the first three women's Olympic team. He was assistant for the men's Olympic team in 88. And he was head of player personnel for our 2018 team. Talk Timmy Taylor out of being the assistant coach says, you guys are going to get your ass kicked. Why do you want to coach that team? Talk wow. Timmy to be the assistant. And that's how Craig Patrick got there. We all know how the story ends. Mm -hmm. I always used to say, Timmy, and you still talk to Ben. <laughs> but Timmy has since passed on, but wonderful guy. But there was, I mean, there was things that were true. And things that, that were, you know, for the movie type of thing. But on the adage of, you know, getting along, obviously, after you win, everybody loves each other, right? Sure. But initially, but all those things about, hey, when they were in Norway, when he made them skate, sure did. It sure did. Oh, um, after the game, made him. After the game, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, made him, made him skate. Uh, and I've got his book here. Um, there's a, the, so the doctor, remember the doctor with, yep. uh, so Dr. Nagabons is George Nagabons. Well, he's still alive. He's almost a hundred. Oh man. He just wrote a book about two years ago and he signed a copy for, so I'll, I see Dr. Nagabons once a year in Colorado Springs, but, but he and Herb were really, really tight. And Dr. Nagabons was a doctor in Minnesota. And he was back then, they didn't have a full-time doctor, you know, for um, the teams where they do now. I think Clark, Clarkson will have somebody from, you know, in St. Lawrence do from the hospital. They'll come with a team as their team doctor. But, and that's what Dr. Nagabons did. He came, was Minnesota's team doctor, formed a relationship with Herb, and that's how he ended up going to the, to the Olympics. But he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And he and Jim Craig are really, really, really tight. And Jimmy's a good guy, but Dr. Nagasbond's a wonderful guy, but just a little, little guy. Re yeah, but it, but it's but those things are true. Most of it, those things are true. There's some things that were just easier to weave in for, for the story type of thing. But but yeah, I mean, from uh, uh, the Cox guy being the last cut, true. It's true. Um, the, the one thing too, um, Herb, last guy cut off his team was true. Yeah. So, I mean, all those things, I mean, and that's what makes it great, right? A majority of the things are true, but there were some things, but, but a large majority of it were, were bit real factual. Kind of transition, Dan, David, if you don't mind into your, into the end of your kind of your question. So up until 2000 and 
was it 2002 or might have been, you know, 1998, same as the women. They had in the collective bargaining agreement with the NHL, the players were made available to go to the Olympics. Right. So now yeah. go, to, go, go to 1998. Um, well, let's take 2002 because that was in um, Vancouver, right? When we uh, lost in Vancouver, when Ryan Miller and uh, Sid scored the winning goal there in overtime. All of our American players knew each other really, really well because they played together all up through. When I say our guys in 2018 didn't know each other, they didn't because you got Jordan Greenway that's 18 years old, 19 years old, and you got guys that are 31. They never were played on any teams anywhere along. So yeah. that was a handshake because they never played with them up. But when you're talking in 2002, you know, uh, Keith Kachuk, Chris Chelios, I mean, you can go on and on with those guys. They'd always played each other or against each other in college or literally played with each other on pro teams. So everybody knew everybody. And it would be easier for me to pick the men's Olympic team today than it would be to pick those American guys, right? I mean, any, I, I shouldn't say it, but most people can just go on, you know, you've got everything to your fingertips on the internet now. Hey, give me the best American left winger and points. The bet, you know, you can go down and, and coaches are gonna have their who that they want in situations. But there's not going to be – you're not going to pick – David's not going to pick 15 different guys from Pete or Joe or I. We're all picking Patrick Kane. We're right. all we're all picking Austin Matthew, right? We're, you know – and that's the same thing that it was in most years going along. So um, – but right now, the collective bargaining agreement is back in place for the next two Olympics. So for the next two Olympics – um, you know, you'll have, you'll have the best available American NHL players, which will be fun, which will be fun. So with the IIA, so I'm on the IIHF uh, board too. So the, which is the International Ice Hockey Federation. They're the ones that govern hockey in the world. And then you have like USA Hockey, Hockey Canada, Finland, Sweden, they're all under the IIHF. So what is going to happen, and it will be announced pretty soon, is they're trying to, the IHF and the NHL is trying to put together a 10 year, basically a 10 year calendar. As if you guys have watched, and I've been for probably the last seven, eight years, the NHL All Star Games, probably not the most entertaining game, not like it used to be. Okay. It's kind of a little gimmicky now, which, mm -hmm. I mean, and hey, I know Bill Daly well with deputy commissioner. And I tell Bill that we'll have beer. I said, you know, well, what the NHL is in the IHF are going to do is one year we're going to have, so, so you're going to get on a cycle. So the next Olympics are in 2026. Okay. So they want to have a world cup of hockey in 24, the Olympics in 26, World Cup of Hockey in 28, Olympics in 30. So then what will happen is you only have one year that you'll probably have to have an all-star game. And as we know, all-star games are for, which is a great thing too, is for are for the sponsor, right? So all the sponsors are the ones that basically go to the all-star game because if you have season tickets in, in Ottawa, you don't get your, you don't get to go to the all-star game. You've got to buy, you've got to buy a ticket to the all-star game. Mm -hmm. The league keeps the tickets and they, a lot of them go to sponsors and different people kind of like, Hey, as a thank you for everything you do. So I think that the league is going to go towards that because they're in negotiation because if we have a world cup of hockey now, it's, you know, you're taking the best NHL guys more than just at the Olympics and, and because of the age, hey, I, Joey might be good in 2026, but by the Olympics in 2030, he's run his race, right? So, so we can see Joey in 26 and see somebody else, and then we have different guys. And it, it's easier for me to, get the, to look at the, that group of players in more than just one setting. So there's a lot of things that 
you know, the NHL is trying to partner with the IHF and the Federation to do to make it better. But I mean, hockey's, hockey's exciting. Um, I think they're heading in, in, in a good direction. Um, I think, um, you know, there's, there's, I mean, as we all know, there's big money in it now, right? I mean, there's huge mm -hmm. involved in it, just like anything else, but it's still a sport where it's not, in my opinion, gross, grossly, you know, gross, the amount of money these guys are making, it's a lot, it's a real lot, but you're not making, you know, $34 million for one season and, you know, pitching, which, you know, I, I don't have anything against that, but it's just, saying it's a little bit more grounded because, Hey, there's just not the exposure yet for it, but I do think some good things will happen. You know, when you, when you get uh, more media involved, you know, you're getting uh, what TSN involved, you're getting ESPN back involved. You know, that's where the money starts to come in for these. Players. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's yeah, felt, I was, glad to, it was glad to see ESPN picking, picking up more hockey, you know? Yeah. And I know it's all, all contracts and money and stuff and, but, you know, for the longest time, I never watched ESPN because I don't like the NBA. And, well, there, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think that they're, I mean, hey, it's, uh, you know, you got the ESPN Plus. I mean, you're, you're hey, you're getting, you're, getting, you're getting local college hockey games on ESPN Plus. Right. And, I mean, I think it's awesome. You'll be able to, you know, people can be wherever and they can say, hey, I want to watch Mariana Locke play for St. Lawrence. And now if she was playing now, they could watch her play on ESPN plus. Yep. So, I mean, those are, those are the things that I think are, that, that are great for the athletes and for people to be able to see that. So it's fun. It's really good. It, it certainly feels like hockey is, is making the push. I mean, I don't know if they'll get to the realms of NFL, NBA and, you know, and major league baseball is more a regional sport now than it is nationally. Right. But of course, obviously, they, you, it's Major League Baseball is still, I mean, they, because you got 162 game season, they can pump the money out. Right. Um, but it certainly felt to me like the NHL did itself a favor with expansion. Uh, it, having 32 teams now, they've got the whole country covered. Uh, they brought in some cities, brought Seattle, brought Las Vegas in. Um, it just feels like uh, it, it adding, getting to 32 teams, what it has helped that sport. W would you agree with that? Oh, no question about it, Joe. I mean, and I, and I've been, I've been to the rink um, both in Seattle and in Vegas. And it's just, I mean, it's just crazy when you go to, to Las Vegas. I mean, it's, I mean, Hey guys, we're USA hockey is thinking about how, you know, I mean, we're going to be putting together an RFP for our world juniors and, I could see, I could see maybe being Seattle or Las Vegas, right? I mean, it's those, those markets are just, I mean, growing leaps and bounds. And then when you think of Seattle, I mean, you're in the West, the, the Western hockey league is right there too. Right. So you want to have for world juniors, if you can have a little bit of a proximity to Canada, because literally this year, when we were, when we were in Edmonton, we were in Seattle training in Seattle and then we flew from Seattle to Edmonton. So, I mean, there's just a huge population of, you know, Canadians right there on the border and it makes it easier to have, you know, sold out rings. I mean, it's a big, it's a big proposition, but no, I think Joe, you're bang on. I just think that, you know, the league has done a real good job. I mean, obviously there's some markets are still struggling. I mean, they still have to, in my opinion, they still have to figure out what they're going to do for a facility for Arizona if they want to keep it there, right? You can't be playing. You can't be playing in a small college rink and think you're going to make your, you know, your financial commitments that you have for your players in the league. That is a small rink, too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you know, you know, when when you're paying your top end guy at ten million dollars and you have a ten thousand seat rink, you know that math just doesn't work out. So I mean, they, they'll have to they'll have to do something on that but um i think as a whole they've done a, they've done a real good job all i know is these franchises are worth so much money now just like any everything every other franchise to get involved in it so um 
I, and I mean, I can, I can see that. I mean, there's probably some other markets, but I think they want to make sure, in my opinion, if it was me, you want to make sure you do a good job of what you have now before you want to expand too quickly. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be great for, for example, like, I mean, the new facility for the Islanders have now, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, you walk into these buildings now and it's like, oh my gosh, these things are, you know, Taj Mahal, you get into their locker rooms. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not a lot of them. I mean, you, it's just unbelievable the facilities these have. Hey, we see it locally, right? I mean, every, every one of these colleges locally, hey, we got to redo our rinks and our, and our locker rooms to be able to attract the best players. And that's what's, that's what's required now. So, I mean, there's places players want to go just because of the community, the facility, the fan base, you know, and there's other places they'll say, ah, maybe I don't want to go there. So, but I think as a whole, they've done a pretty good job. Yeah. The days of the wooden bench with the rubber mats on the floor. Uh, that's right. gone. <laughs> no, yeah. Hey, it's, it's, I mean, they, if, if people want, I mean, it's, I mean, and, and that's the, in my opinion, that's the tough thing when you're talking about college sports, you know, you've got to have all the bells and whistles because, and especially if you're living where we are, right. I mean, you better have those things <laughs> Because there's not, you know, you're not going to, and, and, and it's not, it's not a knock on where we live. It's just, it's just the reality of it. You know, you just don't have the other things that you can do um, that, that, you know, other, other places have. So you better have a good facility. So that's, that's one of the questions I always ask, uh, you know, college coaches that are in the North country. I'm like, so how do you, what's your, what's your best recruiting tool to make the winter time look appealing to these kids, you know, that are not coming from, from locally. So, I mean, if you got a great facility, that's, that's always a good selling point. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, you got, you got to have, a, you have a, got to have a really good facility. And I mean, obviously you have to have a good fan base, what both St. Lawrence and Clarkson does. So that's, you know, that helps out a lot. And, uh, and you have to have the, the, whether it's, you know, a pro team or whether it's a college team, you've got to have from the top down committed to winning, right? You got to be committed to it. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the things. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it, I, and my end of stuff is, is um, like, I, I'll, I'll oversee the administrative stuff of things. Like I, you know, I'll, I'll interact with, um, I mean, and Joey will name, so I'll interact with like Brian Burke. I'll call Berkey up and say, hey, who's playing well on your team? you know and then what we'll do it kind of back to what pete said is you know we, we have a list of everybody so what will happen is when we get closer so let's talk about the men's national team so the men's world championship team and these are nhl guys that don't make the playoffs so we'll be you know like i said hey i knew ottawa wasn't making the playoffs right so now I'll, what i'll do is i'll go to ottawa and montreal a lot and so if I know, you know, I'll talk to, um, you know, Brady Kachuk, who's the captain of Ottawa, and I'll say, hey, Brady, I mean, know his dad well, and I know these guys well, because they've all played on our national teams and our national development program in, in Michigan. So I've seen these guys since they're 15 years old. So, I mean, I mean, how it just goes back to how far this thing has gone back. So we have a national development program of 17 and 18 year old players that play in Michigan. The best of the best. They'll play college teams. They've come here before and played Clarkson. Uh, I think they last time they played Clarkson, um, I know they, they beat them here, but these are the best of the best. And so they're 18, 17 year old, they're under 17 team, and now they're playing 20 year old freshmen and they're beating the BUs and the BCs. These, all these guys, for example, last year's team, there was eight players on the one team the, that got drafted in the first round out of the 32 teams, eight of them wow. on the team. So now from, you know, it's like, so that's, we had the most from that we had the most from any one team from any country in the world. So these are the best of the best. I mean, Patrick Kane's played on this, the, these develop these teams in Michigan. Um, Austin Matthews did. I mean, you can go on and on and on. So these guys have all played there. So I, I've known these guys and interacted with them since they're 16 years old, because they played in the under, we commit to them for two years. They play in the U, U17 team and then the U18 team. They're housed right there. 
they're billeted there like they're at a, some place in Canada and they all go to school right there. Mm. So I mean, so they all go, so it's the best. So then what they'll end up doing, they'll play, in a, in a, uh, they'll play against the USHL teams and they'll play against college teams all during the year, play about 60, 60 games. And then with, and they're going to school there. And then what they'll do is these guys will transition once they're 18 and they'll go to college and then we'll watch them playing for BU, and then they'll come back and play in our, our national teams, our world junior team. Or in the case of like Jack Hughes and Austin Matthews, they both played on that team, but hey, they're 18. They get drafted for number one overall, and they just go right to the NHL. So that's what, hap- that's what happens. But what I'm saying, so, so we, we, we know these guys. We've got relationships with them. So what I'll do is I'll go to Ottawa and Montreal a lot as they come through. If I know that Dylan Larkin that's playing for Detroit and they're not going to make the playoffs, I see Dylan, you know, are you in? We want you to play. Yep. I'm in. Then what you'll do is, Hey, we had him a number of times, you know, Patrick, Hey, Tainer, you want to come? Yep. I'm in because you're obviously you have a depth chart, but you can only take guys that are not going to make the playoffs. Hey, I'd like to have, you know, a number of guys from the Tampa Bay lightning. Yeah. Not, they're not going to be available. Right. So you well, have to you look, you look at those guys. I don't think any of your Detroit guys are going to be uh, available next year. Well, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> Including the coach. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's how we do. So like, so I oversee, I oversaw the, um, you know, all of the, the administrative, I mean, I'll and coach you, hiring the coaches, the GMs, interacting with the players, I'll go to all the tournaments, you know, I'll interact with the, um, the International Ice Hockey Federation, that type of thing. I'm not picking teams and stuff like that. I'll, I'll work with our coaches and say, hey, who do you want? And David Quinn, who is the Rangers coach, Quinny says, hey, you know, can you make a trip to, you know, to Toronto and talk to so-and-so? you know, because we'd like to have him come. So there's a number of us all around that will do that, but I oversee it. You know, I oversaw the, the program. So, but yeah, it's fun. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, I've met a lot of great people, been a lot of great places. Um, quick, quick story. I'm so one of my closest friends is Chris Chelios. So Chelly and I are tight. So my, my son, Carson. So you guys remember Ron Wilson when Ron Wilson was coaching Toronto and, and Willie coached in Toronto. And he also, he also coached in uh, Anaheim and wonderful, wonderful guy. So Jim Johansson was my assistant at the time. We got world juniors. Willie just got fired about a year ago from Toronto. Brian Burke was there with him in Toronto. And so you know, you know, we're looking at NHL guys and other people that will be available to coach the world junior team. So it's hard. Obviously, the only time you pick an NHL guy for a Christmas tournament, if he's just gotten fired, right? Or he's available, you know, he's got a couple of years left in his contract. They fired him. He's got money and he's looking for something or he's looking for something to do. Well, Ron Wilson was available. Um call Willie up and say, Hey, Ron, any, I, any interest of coaching the world junior team? Cause he was done, done from hockey, made a boatload of money. Said, no, you know, I'm not going back to the NHL. No bad feelings about it. Just say, hey, I'm going to retire. Well, we talk him into, we talk him into coaching the world junior team. So we're going to Helsinki. We have um, tryouts for the team in late class in August. We got Finland and Sweden coming in the scrimmage with us. We get there a couple of days early, making sure everything. <laughs> Maybe now. <laughs> and Ron Wilson, the coach of the team. So now you got, you know, Arguably, probably one of the best NHL defensemen and probably one of the best NHL American defensemen for sure of all time. And a guy that's, you know, won the Stanley Cup, coaching the team, won the, the World Cup of Hockey in 2000. Uh, when was it? Oh, the, 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 the Canada Cup, excuse me. He won the Canada Cup when they won that. So Willie says to me, he goes, Gavin, 
I haven't skated in two years. Can I get an hour's worth of ice? <laughs> so we get an hour's worth of ice so we can skate around. He says, yeah, I'm good. So they go in the locker room. These kids are all trying out. He comes out and he goes, Gavin, these kids don't say a thing. I said, Ron, they're 17, 18, and 19 years old. You've won a Stanley Cup. You've won a World Cup. You've coached an Olympic team. And you got Chris Chelius might be the best defenseman they've ever seen in their life. And he can still play now. You know what? I said, you might want to, like, you know, they're, they're awestruck. They're starstruck. Yeah. They're, they're starstruck. So, so they end up, they, they all warm up and things, things are great. But the best story about with these guys is, you know, hey, you don't always win. So we're playing. We lose a semifinal game two to one, and we were all over the Russians and couldn't beat them. We play in the bronze medal game against Finland. In Finland, we beat them in the preliminary round two to one in the preliminary round. So now we're, you know, you're devastated. You're losing the semifinals. Now you're going into a bronze medal game, not playing the gold medal game. You're playing in the home team's country in front of 12,000 people and they want to win so bad that, you know, they're just, cause they lost to Canada. Didn't think there was any way they were going to beat them anyway. So they thought this is where, you know, if they got to the bronze medal game, great. So they're playing us in the bronze medal game. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, we're in trouble because you know, all the things I'm saying, we're playing them at home. We just had a disappointing loss. We probably should have beaten them. So Ron Wilson gave the most, the best, I mean, not a guy that rants and raves, just talked to these kids, calmed them down, kind of impressed on them how important this is going to be to them 15 years from now. Not today, you know, being able to say you, you want a bronze medal, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. Well, don't they come out like gangbusters? So it's a team that we just won, beaten a goal in the preliminary rounds, playing the whole, we beat them eight nothing in the bronze medal game. They were ever, ever in it. In the middle of a good story, too. Only person, the only person that had their medal on was Ron Wilson. Hmm. And and I go to Willie, I go, Willie, I was impressed with you before. I'm really impressed with you now. He goes, Gavin, they don't give these things away. So just, I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful guy. Back to Chris Chelios. Chelly says to, to Ron Wilson, he says, Willie, if I ever get an NHL coaching job, I'm going to hire you my, as my assistant. But, but Chris is just a wonderful guy, um, smart guy, um, fun guy. But, like, I mean, I was with him in 2006. It's 2006 on GM of the women's team. He's playing for the men's team. You know, he's just, I mean, and he's almost 60 years old. I mean, yeah. he so long and was so good. But just a really, really good person, a lot of good people involved, and it's been uh, a lot of fun with those guys. Well, Gavin, I, I got a feeling that you could probably talk for two to three more hours of, uh, of stories. <laughs> and I could listen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it, again, this this is cool to be able to, again, get another guy from the North Country, another person from the North Country that gives us a, this is a totally new insight for us. Uh, you know, Kisser gives us all the Tampa Bay Lightning in the innards of uh, the NHL, but uh, th this is really cool listening about the international stuff and uh, we, we appreciate you coming on and uh, I'll let uh, I'll let Pete and Dave know that uh, just, just before we went to Placid a month ago, you came over to Winthrop and you hung out with the common folk uh, <laughs> at the American Legion where nobody knew who the hell Gavin Reagan was, but they all know who Joey Rion was. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to I just want to put that out there because I can't drop names uh, 
you know, Butchie Charette, uh, uh, you know, whoever else was might have been at the Legion that night. <laughs> That's Barnes. all I can drop. I can't drop what you just dropped in the last hour, man. That was impressive. Hey, how'd you leave out Dave Barnes and your name drop in there? Come Dave on. Barnes, I get the legend. Yeah. Barnes, yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I, had a, I had a great time, though. I had a great time. We had a blast. It was fun. It was fun. But well, yeah, it, it, it's fun. I mean, it's like you said, there's a lot of, I mean, and I have to, I mean, in closing, one thing I would have to say, the reason why, I mean, you take Kisser, you take, hey, all of us, it doesn't matter what you do. There was somebody that gave you the chance, right? There was somebody that gave you the chance and somebody that kind of, you know, helped you along the way and said, hey, you're pretty good at this. And then obviously you got to be able to do the job when you get there. It doesn't matter what it is, but somebody, you know, so that's what I'm thankful for. It's, it's hey, I mean, I played, I played high school hockey and I played college hockey. I mean, my dad never, my dad never played hockey in his life. He was a basketball player and it was, you know, I, as I always said, you know, my dad's passed, but I always said to him, I said, Hey, listen, you know, I remember I went to basketball and all my buddies were playing hockey. And I said, dad, I want to go play hockey. And he didn't have an ego, you know, and he was a very good basketball player. I mean, really good. He played, he played the same Bonaventure. He's a very good basketball player. He said, okay, yeah, you, you can play hockey. So those are the things that, you know, that, that I take from it is you gotta be, you gotta be humble you got to let kids do what, you know, what they want to do, give them them structure, but you know, you always have to have somebody that, that helps you along the way and champions you a little bit. And I think that's something that's ingrained to all of us in the North country, whereas a lot of other people that would, you know, step over you or step on you so they can do what you're doing and people in our area try to help you and, you know, to, to get where you want to go. So that's what I would say about the North country. Kevin, I really appreciate you coming on our show. It's been an interesting hour. And like Joey said, we could be here for two or three more hours. And <laughs> I, I, you know, we all need to do is just sit down one time and have a, have a cold beverage and then talk some more. Joey sets it up. I'll be there, fellas. I promise you. <laughs> hey. he, he's probably got the spot we can go to too. Go well, hell, I, I just soon, I just soon go back to Lake Placid and because uh, he is the only guy I've ever walked around with Lake Placid that knows more about it than than I do. Because I like I I know every yeah place to go. No, he he he's got it. He he knows. So, but I lived <laughs> I, but I lived there for a year. So during the Olympic for, and for the 2006 Olympic team, because our women we trained there. So I lived there. So yeah, I know everybody. But it's fun. Hey, I, I'm, seriously, Pete, if you guys, I'd love to. You know, you if, Joey, if you guys want to get together, just let me know. I'd be happy to. Absolutely. I might set that up and do a uh, broadcast on site. You never know. We yeah. might figure out something. Yeah, whatever you guys want to do, I'd be happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. Okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Have a good night, guys. Thank That's you. That's going to be it for ESS and Empire State Sports and Wise Guys Sports Talk Show tonight. For Joey, Dave, myself, and our very special guest, Gavin Regan. Good night, everybody, and stay safe. Good night, guys.